uh, I've been doing online mar marketing forever, uh, back to the dial-up days on a VPN. So for those of you that are old enough to know what that is, you understand the pain. Uh, people always ask me, what do I do? Uh, I build better mousetraps. I teach you how to build your own mousetraps. The goal is to get the internet to work for you, not against you, embrace it, live with it, live with the change and let it help you grow your business. Let it help you grow everything about yourself on the web and yeah, just use it to your best advantage. So uh, we're gonna rock and roll. And if anybody has any questions along the way, just yell. I have no problem with questions in the middle, although I think you're all muted. So they will have to let you in. If you have a question, I guess, raise your hand and live or virtual and Dave will let you talk. Uh, and now I got to move my camera because I can't see the little button to move the slide. There we go. So what happens in one minute on the internet? Uh, scary stuff. How much is being done out there? Uh, everybody is everywhere. If you want to know what people are doing in one minute, they're spending $1.6 million online. Uh, they're swiping 2 million times. They're sharing 695,000 stories. This is all within every 60 seconds. It's exponentially growing. Uh, some pretty vibrant information on the web. If you're looking for it, it's out there. You just have to know where to find it and pick the media that you like the best. If you're a LinkedIn person and you don't like Facebook, do your time on LinkedIn. If you're a Facebook person and you don't like Twitter, spend your time on Facebook. You just want to use the media that makes you feel good because if you're using media that's making you unhappy, social media becomes a bad piece of your life. You always want it to be positive. If you don't like it, like personally, I don't like TikTok. We'll get to that eventually, but it doesn't mean people out there that love TikTok aren't going to use it to their best advantage. Just avoid things that don't make you happy. Uh, I was once told the statistic, how many, how many of you watch the news every night on TV? If you watch the news for an hour a night, at the end of the year, you've lost two weeks of your life, you could have been on vacation. And vacation's positive, the news is negative, turn the news off. For those of you in broadcast, sorry, the news is, is a downer. You want, in the same way some social media can scare you away, stick with the platforms you're happy with. Um, where to start. So when you're going to build your brand, whether it's your personal brand or your business brand, you want all the social profiles because they will come up in search. They will help promote you. People that are fans of that media will find you there. Now I said, I hate TikTok. I have a TikTok channel. Doesn't mean I don't have one. I just don't like it. Uh, but I have one because if you're a TikTok fan and you will look me up on TikTok, I exist. That's the whole purpose of this. You need to exist everywhere. If you're not out there, you're not real. So step one, best practices. I want you all to think about this up front. Get a Gmail. Get a Gmail that is not your email, that is only for your social media profiles. You're going to use this just for social media. If you get locked out, you can get back in. Uh, Google will let you have a Gmail for free. Uh, if you're in business and you ever have to give someone access to your personal profiles, you have to give them access to that Gmail. It doesn't have your personal email in it. Uh, in my case, I use a Yahoo account that I have had for 20 years that I don't use for anything else. I use my Yahoo account to log into all my profiles. And I have since added a Gmail to my profiles because Yahoo's get, Yahoo and AOL are very prone to uh, hacking right now. So yeah, get a Gmail. Gmail is better. Um, no one ever sees your login email address. It's only for logging in. So it really doesn't matter what you use. You can get a silly Gmail. You know, I hate social media at gmail.com. If you can get it, great, use it. Something you can remember, a password that is not your super secret password you use for personal things, because if you ever have to give access to someone, you want to make sure it's something you can share. Um, so when we look at Google as a platform, the biggest social network on Google, and most people don't even think of it as a network, is Google My Business. So if you're trying to get found as a business, even as a person, you can put yourself out there, call yourself a consultant, create a Google Maps page. When people search for Google Maps, they find things in their area, and that little Google Map listing opens up to a big Google Map listings. You can have your website, your directions, your phone number, your email, People can save you to their phone, save you to their Google account, tap and dial you, go get your menu. Whatever you're doing on Google as a business, 
this is the number one place to be. I have a business page. I have more than one business page. Um, if you go into Google right now and you put my name into Google Maps and put Darcy Knapp, Albany, you'll find me. I'm actually in Altamont, but Google will find you and give you a map to my house. For those of you that don't want people to come to your house that don't necessarily have a client facing home office, or maybe you're just a person setting up a page, that's fine. Just check the box that says service area. And then Google doesn't show a street address. It just shows a city and a state. So you can be slightly anonymous. Uh, Facebook. So Facebook's going to be our fun time. Facebook is a playground. Uh, people climb in and they just don't leave. You want to know where you're losing your employees' time or your spouse's attention or your kids for hours at a time. Uh, people are just spending their free time as voyeurs on Facebook because they can. Uh, yeah, population of Facebook right now, 1.2 and change billion. Pretty much one out of every one and a half people, they're on Facebook, except in China, they're not allowed on Facebook. But this is the world, this is where people are. There's Facebook for people, for places, for businesses, for products, for services, for employment. And we'll look at some of the different pieces. Uh, but Facebook itself is, it's a whole other country. It's a whole other world. You need to be here. And I don't care if you hate it, you have to be here. So when someone Googles you and they type in Facebook in your name, your page shows up. Uh, when we look at Facebook as a person, do you friend people? Something to think about. Personally, I pretty much say yes to everybody. And then depending on what they post, I start throwing them away. So the nice part about Facebook is you can throw people away and they never get notified. So if someone keeps asking you to be their friend and you don't accept, they know it. If you accept and you dump them later, they don't know it. Uh, once you have a pile of friends, you can use them to your advantage. So you can then tell all your friends, you can send invitations from your business pages to all of your friends and say, hey, come like my page. You can start building your little empire, your little world inside of Facebook's world by utilizing these friends that you may or may not know. Uh, there is a little disclaimer right now. You need to watch out for fake people. Anybody have a fake people experience they want to share? Uh, I can give you one. I got a friend invitation from my husband last week. For those of you that don't know my husband, he doesn't know how to turn a computer on. Uh, he does have a page because I made him one. So I'd have a second admin on one of my business pages because I wanted to protect it. And the page that sent me the invitation was not the page that I built. So I knew it was a fake person. Facebook police are wonderful. Some fake person, his profile was created three hours ago, it has the right name, it has the right picture, and you know them. If it was created three hours ago, it's probably not them. Uh, brand new profiles are generally huge warning signs. These people will try to connect with you and then they will spam you in Messenger and then ask you to send them gift cards. They're all fake. Uh, so whether or not to follow, uh, oh, invitations. So when other people ask you to like their page, you determine whose page you want to follow. Uh, be careful who you follow because depending on your page settings, people you follow, the pages you follow are visible to the public. So I'll give you an easy example. I followed the Yankees for a while. I don't follow them anymore because I have clients in Boston. It became problematic. Uh, there are certain causes that if you follow, certain politics that if you follow and people see it on your page, can lose you a friend, can lose you a business prospect, can lose you a client. So we want to make sure, whoops. Yeah, we want to make sure we jump two screens ahead. We want to make sure we keep it clean. So if you're profile is going to be public facing, pay attention to what you like and who you follow because other people will see. And if you don't want them to see it, don't like it, don't follow it. It's all about just protecting your social reputation at that point. Uh, nobody knows I'm a Yankees fan anymore because it's not on my page. So personal page settings, when we look at your settings in your page, so this is my page. Uh, who can see my page, who can see my posts, who can share, who can tag. Mine's pretty much open to the public until you come down to a little bit lower, you know, who can look me up by email or by phone number, friends of friends. I don't leave that open to the public. If you don't know one of my friends, you can't look me up by email or phone number. You can still look me up by name, uh, but that's, again, just to protect the page a little bit. 
Uh, activity, for those of you with small children, friends only, please. Um, you don't need friends of friends or the public seeing pictures of your kids in the bathtub. That only leads to problems. Uh, you need to watch your security. You need to make sure you protect what you post up on Facebook. Once you post it to Facebook, Facebook owns the rights. So you want to make sure you're not putting anything out there that you wouldn't want your mother to see or that you wouldn't want a stranger to see. It's all about being safe. Safety first. Same when we go to business, uh, who can see your posts, who can publish to your page, what can they publish to your page, uh, why allow people to publish to my page, I moderate everything. Uh, I have profanity filters turned on. Uh, I don't care if people message me privately, that's fine. If you don't want people to message you from your business page, turn it off. Everything can be turned off. Facebook defaults everything to be turned on. So you wanna make sure that what you're looking at out there in your settings is what you want out there in the world. Oh, Ooh, my pointer. Where's your pointer? Ah, now I have a pointer. There we go. That's what we needed. Um, so messaging, we we're looking at messaging down here. Restrictions, is your page available to everybody? If you don't have friends and family in other countries, drop it down to USA. Uh, should your page be shown to everybody? This is your business page. Depending on what you do for business, you probably don't want anybody under 18 on your business page. Facebook now lets them in as young as 14. Just watch what's going on. Uh, I don't have any specific words, but my page moderation is set to a high filter. It is turned on. Uh, I don't care if Facebook suggests my page to other people. If you care, turn it off. Uh, again, everything can be toggled on, toggled off. So Facebook, you have to be here. Now that I found the pointer, you're going to hate me. Um, so you have to be here because it used to be to be in business, to be a human being with credibility and respect, you had to have a business card. Here we go. You have to have a little business card. This is what, this is what the game was made. And then you have to have a, a website. Now you have to go one step further. You have to have a Facebook page. Your business has to have a Facebook page. You have to be out there in this world to be legitimate. People that want to do business with you are going to go to Facebook, check you out, make sure you who you say you are, you live where you say you live, look at your pictures and make sure you're not a psychopath. That's fine. In that regard, watch what you post to your page. Uh, use Facebook to get in front of your customers. Use Facebook as an open invitation. Hey, come check out my website. Come shop my products. Here's what we're doing in the community. Uh, here's the non-for-profit we're, we're supporting. You know, here's job openings we have. Facebook is great for job openings. Uh, here's a sale that's going on right now. Everybody's posting sales. Black Friday's next week, followed by Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, and Christmas. So get your events out there. The more things you can put on Facebook, the more opportunity you have for people to see you, to find you, make the connection. For those of you that haven't played with Facebook for business, it's an awesome tool. Most important thing is your URL, facebook.com slash your business name. You can use capital letters, dashes, dots, spaces, numbers. Get something up here that's branded because when people go to Google and do a search and look for you by name, your, that Facebook page will show up. While all of your posts behind Facebook, business or personal, are behind a login and password, that URL that page with the, the domain name, whether it's facebook.com slash your personal name, facebook.com slash your business name, that page is visible to organic search. You will show up. Uh, cover picture, just like your regular page, logo picture, just like your personal profile page, uh, business reviews. You can put all your information about your business up. Uh, just a great way to make yourself real out there on Facebook. So when we look at websites, 90% of all websites get zero organic traffic, no natural search. Facebook pages show up top of search because Facebook is a huge property. You'll find that you'll get more traffic into Facebook pushing into your website in, in many cases than you'll ever get from Google because this is organic and it's page one placement. And we'll get to that toward the end. I'll give you an example. Um, Facebook commerce. So Facebook now has an entire e-commerce module. If you haven't used it before, it has changed recently. Uh, check your store. It may not be active. You may have to reload it. Facebook's done a little bit more policing. They're making you jump through a number of hoops 
to get a business manager account, get that verified, then you can have an e-store. Once you have an e-store, all of your products that people can buy on your website, they can buy on Facebook. It still checks out through your website. It's just a great exposure through Facebook. And again, when we're trying to build a brand, the more places you can put your product, the more places you can put your logo, the more places you can put your link, the better. And when you make your cover art, get your logo into your cover art. I have to have a chat with them. They need to do some more work. Uh, so ads, you can do all kinds of ads to promote anything you want on Facebook. Facebook will take your money to promote everything. You can get little sponsored ads. You can get big in-stream posts. There's all kinds of settings when you go to do your ads. Uh, if you've never done ads before, you're going to do it for the first time. Facebook does offer free consulting. You can set up an appointment with a Facebook ads expert. They will do a, a screen share with you and literally walk you through how to build the best ad for your goal. You don't have to pay me. You don't have to pay them. They'll do it for free. Uh, all kinds of audience definitions. They can help you select it. Again, you're going to do age, demographic, psychographic, geographic. Do you want homeowners? Do you want newly engaged? Do you want people with kids? Do you want people with minivans? Do you want people who speak Spanish in the household? Whatever that criteria is that you know is your best customer, you can define that audience. The tighter the audience definition, the more expensive the clicks are going to be. But if you know your perfect customer is a two-family soccer mom, kids under five in household, homeowner, speaking Spanish in their house, that's your perfect candidate, just buy that audience only. It's not about buying the world. It's not about buying the front page of the newspaper. It's about buying that little sliver of the audience that's gonna get you that conversion, get you that new customer. Within your ads, you can run multiple images, you can run video, you can promote on Instagram, you can choose your audience by affinities, likes, and interests. So. If you only want to promote to Yankees fans, you won't get me anymore, but you'll get other Yankees fans that live in the state of New York. You can go by what their interests are. Uh, events are a great option for boosting. So if you're doing a local event, for-profit, not-for-profit, birthday party for your kid, whatever's out there and you want to have more people show up, boost that event. Make sure you set your geography. Google's default is the whole country. You don't need to be promoting a local event in Idaho. Your local events in Albany, do a five or six mile radius from your event. If you want to bring in the local audience, fabulous. Uh, Lookalike audiences, a little dangerous sometimes. Lookalikes are what Facebook will create. They'll take the audience you've been running ads to and build you a parallel audience of people they think are similar to your people. Again, watch your geography. And if you're running a lookalike audience, run an A-B testing with a current ad group so that you know whether that lookalike audience is converting because sometimes they don't. Uh, there are special ad categories. There are restrictions for housing, employment, and political ads. You just got to follow the prompts, play by the rules. You break the rules, Facebook will throw you out of Ads Manager. Um, and it's a pain in the butt to get back in. Uh, but if you're doing employment, if you're doing hiring, this is a great way to reach a huge audience. Uh, one housekeeping issue, uh, when you add people, when you're a business and you're adding people to help you manage your Facebook page, you can add admins and you can add editors and you can add moderators, you can add content creators. There's like seven different criteria now. Really important, if you add someone, they have to start out the highest level you can make them as an editor, then you can upgrade them to admin. Keep in mind, any admin can delete any other admin and it can be problematic. Um, so unless you trust these people with your live, make them an editor. They can do everything except delete you. Uh, you know, even a spouse, unless you trust them with your life, be editor only, you don't want to get deleted. Uh, Facebook Marketplace, if you haven't gone shopping lately, uh, take some of those things on your wish list and stick them into Facebook Marketplace and see what's out there. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I actually sold two cars this year on Facebook Marketplace for free. Free is good. Uh, if you want to yeah, buy a coffee cup, great. Here's a coffee cup. But then there's some strange things. So just be careful. If you're on Facebook Marketplace, be careful what keywords you put in that search box right there. But there's all kinds of things on Facebook Marketplace. And it, again, a lot of fun. Great way to promote your business. I don't care what you're selling, put it out there. 
you can just put one piece out there every couple of weeks, go for it. Uh, jobs. So this is Facebook job market. Right now you can still post jobs for free. I'm sure that will change the same way Craigslist went from free to paid a couple of years ago. Facebook is still free. So we posted a job this week. Uh, it's free. I've already had an application come in. Uh, jobs at nearby businesses will all show up. You can search by industry. You can search by location. You can search by type. You can search by keywords. If you want to be a bank teller, you put a bank teller in the box and it will bring you all the bank teller jobs. Great way to find a job if you need a job. Great way to post a job if you have a job. Uh, again, all kinds of credibility just because you're out here. It's a fun playground. Uh, LinkedIn, digital resume. Think of LinkedIn as a digital resume. Most people that are on LinkedIn on a regular basis are on LinkedIn more because they're looking for a job or they're looking to hire. But it's a great way to connect. It's a great way to get recommendations. You can join groups that you have like interests in. You can put all your work history out there. You can connect with people that you would never expect to do business with because you never know when they're going to be looking to do business with you. Uh, I actually had a phenomenal job offer from a LinkedIn connection. Oh God, uh, at least 12 years ago, before I started my company. Um, a Manhattan company offered me a ridiculously well-paying job. The problem was I had to commute to Manhattan, which was a little bit more than I wanted to do on a daily basis. Uh, but they found me and they came after me. And that's only, if you're not out there, they don't know you exist. So put yourself out there, don't be afraid. You can also create a business page. You can put your education out there. Uh, this tells you how many people looked at my page last week. So it's always fun to see that I have 175 stalkers any given week. All right, so LinkedIn business page. If you click my business page link, this will take you to my business page. Again, kind of like Facebook, you get a cover image. It's a little skinnier. You get your logo, you get your business information, uh, build your brand. You know, if you're a person and you're a consultant, put yourself out here. If you're a writer, put yourself out here. If you're a teacher, put yourself out here. Any reason to create a page. The more pages you have, the more positive control you have over what's shown on a search engine. Uh, you can add services, you can add posts, you can add employees, you can tell your story. Um, add your website link, your social media links. Again, all you're trying to do is build that brand. You know, The more positive information you can put out on the web, the stronger your chances of getting that job, <clears throat> getting that new client, just getting that right connection for you. Uh, Instagram, it's all about pictures. Um, you can you put your brand name up, you have your keyword, your uh, call sign, your hashtags. Uh, Instagram also has stores. Her store link is down right now because again, with the new Facebook rules until she can get approved on Facebook, she can't get approved on Instagram. Uh, but once she's approved, her store link will be right here. And then all of her products that are on her website, you get 3000 products that'll instantly be on Instagram. And it may not be someone shopping that finds that product. It's just somebody looking at pictures that say, oh, I want to buy that. I wonder if that's for sale. And they click on it and poof, they end up in the store. Uh, Instagram is priceless for building that reputation. For those of you that don't use Instagram, time to start. For those of you that do use Instagram, Instagram had a shift on desktop in the last couple of weeks. You can now from the desktop post, you can hit the little posty button. Uh, you used to not be able to post. You had to do it from your phone. And the challenge with that is your phone is restricted to five IG accounts. Your desktop is unlimited. So I can log into anybody's account and post now. It's awesome. Very cool stuff. Uh, Twitter, love it, hate it, don't care, gotta be there. So again, same thing, cover picture, personal picture, who you are, what you do, your hashtags, your links, your website, your posts. And that's the post for this class because I had to post something on Twitter for the screenshot because I hadn't been on Twitter in probably a year. Um, again, it's all about the branding. So now my Twitter is not a great name. My Twitter is my eBay handle. Uh, and it used to be my license plate. Uh, Try to keep it with your name so people can find you. This has been my Twitter handle since Twitter was brand new, so I'm sticking with it. But you always want to make sure your page names are your personal name or your business name, depending on what you're trying to promote. And it's all about just getting out there. As far as marketing, actually, 
no we've lost her we've lost our twitter can i go back back arrow okay marketing on twitter 12 to 24 demo very young so unless your target is very young yeah stay away facebook's a little older uh in between you got to go to instagram that's where they all are the 20 somethings and the 30 somethings live on ig TikTok, Snapchat, uh, YouTube. So YouTube is fun. You have a personal YouTube channel. You can upgrade it to business. I've kept my name on my channel as my name as opposed to my business name. Uh, it's all personal preference, same thing. You get a cover shot, you get your little picture and then it's gonna have all your uploads. People when they come to your channel can watch all your videos. Uh, YouTube. So search on YouTube. You can buy search ads. Pennies a click. Great way to get people to see your message. If you've got a good message, this is where you want to market. Uh, literally two to three cents a click. You can get people to watch that video all day long, a dollar a day, and you can have 20, 30 people watching your video every day. As long as you've got something to say, it's going to promote yourself, promote your brand, promote what you're doing in the community. Get it out there. Uh, Pinterest. My Pinterest is branded with the business, which is great. Uh, there's nothing in here about my business, which is not so great. But again, web link, hashtag. I have 73 followers and there's nothing out here of any value. So anybody can have followers. Um, and yes, that is not a giant gerbil. It's actually something with a longer name. So it's a, it's a pry or pre, I don't know. It looks like a giant gerbil. I had gerbils as a child. So I made the mistake of clicking on it. Now I have a giant gerbil on my page forever because there's nothing else on my page of interest. But I'm out there. When you go Google my business, my Pinterest page will show up. Uh, oh, yeah, we talked about TikTok. I hate TikTok, but I have a page. It has my brand name. It has my logo link. It has my little smiling face. It has my one video I did for my other business. Uh, I don't go here ever. But that's my preference. TikTok does not make me happy. So I stay off of it. I just have the page. Treat all your social media like it. If it doesn't make you happy, don't waste your time in it. Just create the page. The page is a good thing. Uh, Snapchat. Uh, again, best practices. If you don't want the world to see it, don't put it out there. Uh, this is not me. I don't have a Snapchat account. I don't like Snapchat. To the point of, I didn't even make the account. Um, I just stole somebody else's picture. So just understand if you put a silly picture out there of yourself, people will steal it and use it in their PowerPoint presentations. Uh, now, and the ever popular, should HR see this or not? If you have to ask the question, don't post it because they will find it. All right, best practices number four, what happens in the web stays on the web. You can delete it. You can think you purged it. It's out there. Anyone that's ever seen it can repost, re retweet, and recover. Uh, nothing is ever deleted. If you have something out there that you're trying to find that you don't think can be found, it can be found. Um, Google archives everything. Facebook saves everything. Um, yeah. If you put it out there, just understand it's out there forever. All right, URLs. So best practices number five, brand yourself. Personally, business. Pers so it's my personal Facebook, my business Facebook, my personal LinkedIn, my Facebook LinkedIn, my Twitter, you're stuck with it. Uh, my Instagram is actually branded to the Albany Job Fair because that's the only pictures I post are job fair pictures. So that's fine. Um, that's again, I don't necessarily need an Instagram with my name on it or with my business name on it. The only pictures I post are event related. So it's branded with the event. You're going to do what you're going to do on social media. Try to look at your landing URLs, your page names, so that you can have them come up in search. So in search, if you Google me, I need bigger print. Um, you get my website, you get my LinkedIn, you get my Facebook, you get my Twitter, you get whatever that is. Uh, Dun & Bradstreet. Yeah, I exist on DMB. Uh, Girdlin Chamber, I exist there too. So I basically own, if you Google me, and you can try this at home if you're bored, about seven pages of Google. When you hit the Darcy Knapp, it's the basketball player. I am not him. Uh, the rest of them are mostly me. 
If you can control all of the positive information out here from the Google Plus business page to all of the pages on search results page one, it makes you look really powerful. It makes you look like you must know what you're doing because, oh my God, you own the search. That's the game. That's how you build that social reputation. You can be the worst person in the world. You can build yourself a beautiful social media reputation. Uh, and people don't understand that this is all built by me. They see this and they think, wow, you no, know, I built it all. Take the time, build the pages, make sure your URLs have your branding in them and you can be just as powerful for your name too. Uh, so best practices number six, let's make it as easy as possible. So you've got your new Gmail, open up a Word doc, put everything in that Word doc that you're gonna need to build your profile, your bio, your certifications, your awards, your images, your video links, your other profile links. Do you have a Word doc full of everything and you start opening up social media pages, you can just copy paste. Keep in mind all this information other than your primary profile page is behind the login and password. No one's ever gonna see it from a search page. And when they do see you from a search page, you want all the data to be consistent. Uh, and I would say at least once a year, open up the Word doc, update everything that needs to be updated, then open up every single social media page and copy paste again. I can tell you that Dave gave me a hell of a project rebuilding this PowerPoint because I had to go into all of my social media platforms. And guess what? I had some stuff that hadn't been updated since before COVID. And two years on the web, a lot of stuff changes. So you want to make sure you keep everything current. Current is, current is critical. Uh, we're going to look at some fun statistics. So shift happens. So how are consumers spending their time with media? You know, TV versus digital, you know, go back to 2018 and, you know, digital was this little blob. And then you just watch it climb and climb and climb. And you watch TV drop and drop and drop. What's also affecting TV dropping is streaming climbing. But when you look at 60% of media time being spent digitally, this is where the money for advertising is going. It's going away from broadcast. Um, the statistics say 90% of all broadcast television is watched on a DVR. Nobody's watching the commercials. But when you're streaming a video, when you're on a social media page, when you're scrolling through content, the ads will follow you. The ads will find you. You'll never have to start looking for something to buy. The products are going to find you because based on what you searched for and the the, your profile criteria, those ads are going to filter right in and chase you down, which is kind of scary, but that's where we're headed. Social media time. Uh, for anybody that's not sure how much time their employees, their friends, their neighbors were spending on social media uh, through the end of last year, it was kind of static. COVID kind of flattened the, the, the curve a little bit, but two and a half hours a day is a lot of time spent on social media per capita. It's a huge amount of time. Human beings are spending more time on social media than they are with broadcast TV. They're spending more time with social media than they are reading a book, reading a newspaper, doing anything else. It, it, this is where people are spending that leisure time. Figure if you're awake for 12 hours a day and you're working for eight of them and you're commuting for half an hour each way, that's nine hours that only leaves you three hours left. And if two and a half are being spent on social media, that's your time. So you want to be out here. You want to make sure you have a good social media presence, that your business is well represented, your personal page is well represented, because people are going to talk to you here more often than they're going to talk to you on the phone. Think about people that you message on Facebook compared to how much time you spend with them on the phone. A lot more messaging going on right now than face-to-face -face or phone calls. Uh, Search engine share, for those of you that want to think about, you know, why Google? Because Google owns the lion's share of search market. This is October 2021. Google's pushing a 90% share. Uh, it's where the world is. It's the search engine this country uses. It blows the doors off of everybody else. Uh, Bing at one point had a 10% market share and Yahoo was pushing about eight. 
they just slowly lost everything to Google because Google delivers that, that really good user experience. Uh, some fun Google statistics. So yeah, 5.6 billion searches per day on Google. You've got over 70,000 searches per second, 227 million searches an hour, more than half a billion searches a day. Um, things to think about, half of Google searches don't end with a click. They're tapping and dialing. They're getting the information they want from that search results page. They're never going to a website. Half a search today is mobile. Uh, teens are very heavy voice search users. They talk to the hand. They don't type. Typing takes too long. It's too much effort. They just ask the phone in their hand, what should they do? Where are they going? Where do, what, what are they eating? What's in style? What did some, so-and-so wear yesterday? It's the nature of the beast. 14% uh, of all Google searches are actually done in the form of a question. You have to think about all the Alexa bots, the Google bots. Uh, everybody's got an Echo Dot. If you're talking to that computer device, whether it's a phone in your hand or an Echo Dot, it's a question. You're asking, what's the weather today? You're not typing in what's today's weather. You're just asking that device. That device is giving you an answer. So you want to make yourself, your brand, and your company visible via social media so you can be part of the solution. Someone asks a question to their bot and you want to be the answer. Social media is a great way to have good page credibility and come up in those searches. Uh, so when we look at search, voice search, image search, social search, video search, it's all about creating that positive presence, that building that little reputation so that no matter what people click on, it's all positive experience. Um, so visibility, those URLs your, of your profiles, your name, your business name, alt tags if you're on the website or if you're putting images up into Pinterest, your images into Facebook, you're putting images into Instagram, alternative text tags are available, put that tag in, put that description in. When you're putting videos on YouTube, again, name, description, web address, phone number, physical address, if it's important, give the user all the information possible so that they can make a buying decision to come to you. Uh, on your website, again, title tags, contact information on your homepage, alt tags on your images, location, if it's important. Use everything to your advantage. Uh, mobile, mobile, so much fun. So when we look at social media and we look at social media on mobile and we look at the number of mobile devices and we look at the percentage of social media users using a mobile device, it's insane. Think small screen. I don't care what you're doing, think two, thumb, two thumbnails. So if you're building an image and it's gonna be on small screen, you're not gonna get 12 words across that image. You're gonna get two or three tops. Always think small device. Uh, yeah, the numbers are just going to keep growing and keep growing and keep growing. It's, it's amazing. This is of January. The numbers are going to be even stronger right now. Not that we can get much higher than 98.8%, uh, but digital is the way to go. You've got to get out here. You've got to build that reputation because people aren't looking you up in the yellow pages. The yellow pages don't exist. They're not picking up your business card from the Chamber of Commerce, they're not going out of their houses. They're not stopping at networking events yet. COVID still has most of us trapped. So use it to your advantage. Get out there and invite people. They have a mobile device. They're talking on their phones. They're texting on their phones. They're messaging on their phones. They're on social media on their phones. Get out there with them. Uh, again, another view at traditional versus digital, just the, the shift. Yeah, digital is just going to keep growing and growing exponentially. Uh, yeah, people are spending eight hours a day on computers. That's, some of us at work are on the computer all day long, but the average person is on eight hours. That's insane. Uh, and again, with COVID the last three years, not much of a shift. We're all kind of running the same uh, numbers. I don't think you're going to see it shift much in the next year either. Uh, oh, and one side note, stock artwork, for those of you putting pictures and memes and all kinds of fun stuff out on social media, pretty much you can bother, you can copy everything, 
off of everybody else's page, nobody cares, don't put it on your website. If you're gonna put something on your website you don't own, just be really careful because if it's not like an Adobe stock free image, most images on Google, even if you're clicking and saying, I want a free image, they're not free. They belong to somebody. There is a copyright and you will get a bill in the mail on the average of about $1,200 for illegal usage of a copy written image. Uh, millions of them on Adobe, dollar pictures on deposit photos. Just because Google says it's free does not mean it's free. We always try to include this because generally somebody in every group has done this. And after class, you're going to have to go back home, open up your website and take every stock image off that you didn't purchase. Sorry, homework. Um, ah, we got to the last slide. Yay. And I don't know how we're doing. Oh, we're, we're early. Oh, no, we're early. Um, so again, if you need help, we do free initial consultations. We may or may not be a fit. There may be a free solution out there. Like I said, Facebook offers free service. If you're going to spend money on Facebook, they will help you spend it. 